Psalm 35 is a prayer for protection from an oppressor. It is a plea for God to intervene and rescue the believer from all their enemies. Enemies that are plotting, accusing, lying, backstabbing or planning spiritual or physical murder to one of God's faithful. Psalm 35, New International Version. Contend, Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and armor. Arise and come to my aid. Brandish spear and javelin against those who pursue me. Say to me, I am your salvation. May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame. May those who plot my ruin be turned back in dismay. May they be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord driving them away. May their path be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them, since they hid their net for me without cause, and without cause dug a pit for me. May ruin overtake them by surprise. May the net they hid entangle them. May they fall into the pit, to their ruin. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord, and delight in his salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, Lord? You rescued the poor from those too strong for them, the poor and needy from those who rob them. Ruthless witnesses come forward. They question me on things I know nothing about. They repay me evil for good and leave me like one bereaved. Yet when they were ill, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. When my prayers returned to me and answered, I went about mourning as though for my friend or brother. I bowed my head in grief as though weeping for my mother. But when I stumbled, they gathered in glee. Assailants gathered against me without my knowledge. They slandered me without ceasing. Like the ungodly they maliciously mocked. They gnashed their teeth at me. How long, Lord, will you look on? Rescue me from their ravages, my precious life from these lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. Among the throngs I will praise you. Do not let those gloat over me who are my enemies without cause. Do not let those who hate me without reason maliciously wink the eye. They do not speak peaceably, but devise false accusations against those who live quietly in the land. They sneer at me and say, Aha! Aha! With our own eyes we have seen it. Lord, you have seen this. Do not be silent. Do not be far from me, Lord. Awake and rise to my defense. Contend for me, my God and Lord. Vindicate me in your righteousness, Lord my God. Do not let them gloat over me. Do not let them think, ha ha, just what we wanted. Or say, we have swallowed him up. May all who gloat over my distress be put to shame and confusion. May all who exalt themselves over me be clothed with shame and disgrace. May those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May they always say, the Lord be exalted, who delights in the well-being of his servant. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness, your praises all day long. Thank you for watching. May God protect and bless you. The biblical story of Moses marrying an Ethiopian woman is one of the most famous examples of interracial marriage in the Bible. This story sheds light on how God was showing his love for all people, no matter their race, and the wrath that God brought against a woman holding a prideful view. The woman was Miriam, the sister of Moses. Numbers 12, 1-11 then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. And they said, Is it a fact that the Lord has spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us as well? And the Lord heard this. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any person who was on the face of the earth. And the Lord suddenly said to Moses and to Aaron and Miriam, You three go out to the tent of meeting. So the three of them went out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent, and he called Aaron and Miriam. When they had both come forward, he said, Now hear my words, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision. I will speak with him in a dream. 
It is not this way for my servant Moses, he is faithful in all my household. With him I speak mouth to mouth, that is, openly, and not using mysterious language. And he beholds the form of the Lord. So why were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? And the anger of the Lord burned against them and he departed. But when the cloud had withdrawn from above the tent, behold, Miriam was leprous, as white as snow. As Aaron turned toward Miriam, behold, she was leprous. Then Aaron said to Moses, O, oh, my Lord, I beg you, do not hold us responsible for this sin by which we have turned out to be foolish, and by which we have sinned. So how can we be sure that the anger of God fell on Miriam because of her pride and defiant racial stance? Sins that are offensive to God. It is in the punishment itself. God afflicted her with an awful skin disease, turning her skin whiter than snow, with rotting flesh. This punishment dictated that she be removed from the people. She would learn by being shunned herself, for the appearance of her skin, just as she attempted to shun a woman from Africa, the wife of Moses. Have no doubt God blessed this marriage, or Moses would not have defied God's will. Then Moses cried out to God, Please heal her. But God sentenced her to seven days of living like this. The entire camp of over 600,000 knew what had happened. It was not hidden or kept a secret. All the people, every one of them, had to wait for her healing, to move on. Miriam was healed, and Moses led the people back into the wilderness. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Ancient Judah was very familiar with eunuchs in society. They did come in direct contact with this group of people, enough so, that both Jesus and the prophets addressed their plight and salvation. The term eunuch was given to both boys and men that had been castrated. The modern medical term for this is orchiectomy, which is the surgical removal of one or both testes. There were also children that were born with this medical condition, that is, with no testes. Several pagan kingdoms, in Egypt, Persia, Ethiopia, China and other societies practicing idolatry, were notorious for buying and enslaving these children. Many children were sold by their parents as a way to ensure the child's life, with any funds received aiding the survival of their families. In the most severely affected, poverty-stricken areas, or to survive droughts and famines, men sold their male children into slavery and servitude knowing they would be emasculated. Some were servants to the priests in pagan temples, but more often they were forced to serve in royal courts to fulfill the debauchery of royalty. Others became chamberlains to the king, also serving the women's quarters which included the harems and concubines. Adult eunuchs are spoken of often in the Book of Esther. Queen Esther was a Jewish woman that became the wife of the Persian king Ahasuerus. Documentation of their presence confirms eunuchs could rise to positions of power and influence within the kingdom, and were often trusted to convey messages between men and women. God's Warning Through the Prophet Isaiah After King Hezekiah of Judah allowed emissaries from Babylon to see all of his earthly treasures, the prophet Isaiah warned him. 2 Kings, chapter 20 verses 16-18 then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house, and what your fathers have accumulated until this day, shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. In Judaism the castration of males, both human and animal, and the intentional impairment of male reproductive organs was strictly forbidden. Eunuchs although acknowledged, were not to serve or enter the Jewish temples. The ban included eunuchs serving as judges and synagogue officials. That being said, eunuchs were not totally ostracized from society. 
Their roles ranged from craftsmen, to military guards to palace servants and advisors. They were often seen as symbols of power and authority in pagan culture. The compassion of God is clearly extended to the eunuch in Isaiah, chapter 56, verses 4 to 5. For thus says the Lord, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, and choose what pleases me, and hold fast my covenant, even to them I will give in my house and within my walls, a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. There are over 35 references to eunuchs in the Bible. From the prophets, to Queen Esther, to Daniel and our Lord Jesus Christ. While Jesus addressed the issue of marriage and divorce with the Pharisees, he also taught his disciples on celibacy and brought to their attention the plight of the eunuch. Matthew chapter 19, verses 11 to 12. But he said to them, All cannot accept this saying, but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born thus from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who is able to accept it, let him accept it. It does not go unnoticed that the scripture immediately following these verses pertains to children. Jesus blesses the children. Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 to 15. Then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. We are clearly taught that the spreading of the word of God and belief in Jesus Christ is not limited to intact men. Philip baptizes the eunuch of Candace, Candace the queen of the Ethiopians. Acts chapter 8, verses 30 to 38. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shear is silent, so he opened, not his mouth. In his humiliation his justice was taken away, and who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Thank you for watching Modern Bible Study Stories. Have a blessed week. The Twelve Apostles of Jesus Christ and Their Legacy in Christianity Let's take a look at what it means to be an apostle or a disciple. What is a disciple? A disciple is a student, a follower of a teacher. There can be many disciples. A disciple is faithfully devoted to the teachings of one chosen master. Disciples pledge their loyalty and have a duty to serve. Luke 10 verses 1 to 20 tells us how Jesus appointed 70, or 72, disciples, to help spread the word with his apostles, because there were so many to reach. 
Jesus sent them out to the cities he would soon visit. He told them to heal the sick and preach that the kingdom of God has come. What is an apostle? An apostle is one that has been a disciple, but now has been appointed to authoritative duties as missionaries to start Jesus' church. After the resurrection, Jesus sent the remaining original apostles, 11, to spread his teachings to all nations and to baptize, Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20. This event has been called the Great Commission. Who were the Twelve Apostles of Jesus? The Twelve Apostles of Jesus were men who faithfully followed Jesus and helped him daily in a variety of ways. The Twelve were chosen by Jesus Christ to spread the Word of God and to help him in his ministry. They were his most devoted disciples and were sent as missionaries to baptize and to form the church. They were hand-picked by Jesus himself, who spoke to them individually and told them to follow him. They are often referred to as the Twelve or the Twelve Apostles. What is the importance of believing in Jesus' Twelve Disciples? It's important to believe in Jesus' Twelve Disciples because they are the ones that followed and served him. They were his students and learned from him. They were the ones that Jesus trusted to carry on his ministry and to fulfill his destiny. Why were there only 12 apostles? The number of apostles Jesus took on is 12. This tradition is found in all four Gospels. Jesus chose 12 apostles because he wanted to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. There were also 12 judges of Israel, one of which was a woman named Deborah. Let's look at who the apostles were, and their main accomplishment. The Apostle Andrew Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. His trade was as a fisherman. He introduced his brother Peter to Jesus, and they both were chosen as apostles. Andrew's ministry was in Russia, Romania and Ukraine, where he is now the patron saint. When facing his own death, he was martyred by crucifixion on an X-shaped cross. He felt unworthy to die in the same manner as Jesus, thus asked for the different cross. The Apostle James, son of Zebedee, the greater, because he was older. James is one of the first disciples to join Jesus. He was also a fisherman. James and his brother John were both called by Jesus to follow him. James and his brother earned the nickname, Sons of Thunder, Mark 3 verse 17, because of their tempers. He was one of the apostles that did bear witness to his transfiguration. James preached in Spain and is known as the patron saint of the country. James was executed by sword, probably beheaded, ordered by King Herod. The Apostle John John was the brother of James, son of Zebedee. His trade was also fishing. John was the apostle that Jesus told to take care of his mother after his crucifixion, John 19 verses 26-27. John wrote five books that are in the Bible. The Gospel of John, John 1, John 2 and John 3 are letters, and the book of Revelation is credited to him. It is believed that John lived a long life and died in old age, being the only apostle that was not martyred or the one that took his own life. The Apostle James son of Alphaeus, the Lesser, because he was younger. Although, James the Less is mentioned in all four Gospels, there isn't much written about him. It's unclear the connection of James to Jesus, as biblical scholars are divided. Some believe he was Jesus's cousin. We are not even sure where he ministered or where he died. Again, there is much speculation about James the Less, but we are sure he did see the resurrected Jesus. The Apostle Peter, Simon Peter. Peter was a fisherman and brother to Andrew. He was a natural leader, and eventually became the first pope. In his time with Jesus, he had attempted to walk to Jesus on water, Matthew 14 verses 28 to 33, disown Jesus, Luke 22 verses 55 to 62, and witness the transfiguration, Matthew 17 verses 1 to 3. Peter preached that Gentiles could be baptized without converting to Judaism. He ministered in Rome and was martyred, being crucified by Nero. The Apostle Simon the Zealot or Cananean or Zealots There is very little known about Simon the Zealot. We're not even sure if he was part of the Jewish cult of revolutionaries that called themselves Zealots, advocating for independence from Rome, or if he was called Zealot because of his enthusiasm for Moses and Jesus. It is believed that he ministered in Egypt and Persia. Some say Simon the Zealot was martyred by being cut in half. Although there are many paintings depicting this, we really aren't sure. The Apostle Philip Philip, 
from Bethsaida, was the apostle that was fluent in Greek and translated. He is often in the presence of Bartholomew, and actually introduced Bartholomew to Jesus. He is well known as the apostle that asked Jesus to show us God the Father, John 14 verses 8 to 11. Jesus tells him that those that have seen him, have seen the Father. Philip's ministry was in Greece and Syria. It is believed that he was martyred by being crucified upside down, continuing to preach until he died. The Apostle Bartholomew There is not much documented in the Bible about Bartholomew. He may have been a fisherman. He is listed as the Apostle seen most with Philip. Traditionally scholars believe he ministered in Ethiopia, modern-day Turkey in Iran, and Armenia. Bartholomew was said to have been martyred in an extremely gruesome way by a king of Armenia. The legend has it he was skinned alive, crucified upside down, and before he died, beheaded. The Apostle Jude There is much speculation around the Apostle Jude. Some believe he was related to Jesus. Others believe he went by the name Thaddeus. Jude wrote the book of Jude in the Bible. It's about rebellion and corruption. We do know that he ministered in Syria, Samaria, and Libya. He was often associated with Simon the Zealot. Jude was martyred by Acts. The Apostle Thomas. Thomas was known as the twin, or doubting Thomas. He was the skeptical apostle, John 20 verse 25. His faith relied on what he saw and could touch, that was until Jesus appeared to him after the resurrection. He actually touched Jesus' wounds. Thomas's ministry was in India. It is believed he was martyred there by being pierced by a spear. The Apostle Matthew Matthew was Jewish, employed by Rome to collect taxes. His profession was despised among the people, as tax collectors were a dishonest group. Jesus called Matthew to serve and he immediately followed him. Matthew wrote the book of Matthew in the Bible. Chapter 9 verse 10 through 13 of Matthew states that Jesus came to minister not to the righteous but to sinners. Matthew's ministry may have been in Judea, Ethiopia, Syria, and Iran. Matthew was martyred in Africa by stabbing. The Apostle Judas Iscariot Judas was the treasurer of the group. John believed he was untrustworthy, John 12 verses 4 to 6. He is best known for being influenced by Satan and betraying Jesus. Matthew 26 verses 14 to 16 and Matthew 26 verses 47 to 49 are the account of Judas plotting and the kiss of betrayal. Judas committed suicide by hanging. Thank you for watching Modern Bible Study Stories. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell for our newest content.